This week, dial up internet, Apple releases the iPod, very tight suits, and furry friends. It's Click's 20th birthday, and these are our greatest hits. Welcome to Click. I'm Spencer Kelly. On the 6th of April 2000, a plucky new TV programme hit the air, promising to talk about something that many people, many in the media, thought was too scary, too nerdy. Technology. No one thought that programme would last more than a couple of years, and yet 20 years later, Click is still on air. Just. Because it's impossible to believe that we're celebrating our 20th birthday in a world that seems eerily similar to those dystopian sci-fi films that we geeks grew up on. Like many programmes, we're going to find it hard to stay on air during the lockdown. But for old time's sake, because it's our birthday, we're going to forget about it all and take one last look at Click Through the Ages. Get ready for 20 years in 20 minutes. Click online. Click online. It's the age-old story. BBC launches new dot-com programme, dot-com bubble immediately bursts. Was it our fault? Probably. Yet Stephen Cole and the team were ready to take apart any tech that they could get their hands on. Episode 1 featured two polar opposite hairstyles explaining how to copy photos off of those newfangled digital cameras and a review of the upcoming PlayStation 2 conducted on the boot of a car. The new millennium was off and running with the latest pocket PCs, the very hottest fashion, and a man trapped in a PDA. Home computers were helping to make music, which could be listened to on whatever that is, and stored on SD cards of a massive 64 megabytes. Yes, and that's not all. You slot the little card in, you stick the headphones on, and you're away, you're free to jog, do whatever you want. Home internet was about to get a lot faster too, as one of the Backstreet Boys showed you how to switch your computer from dial-up to super-fast broadband. By 2001, South Korea was already going nuts for online games, and in Japan, shy boys were honing their chat-up lines by texting computerised girls. Richard was exploring cheap picture-in-picture -picture effects whilst trying to buy a house online. £140,000? Not a chance these days. And for a short time, this was the future. We'd all be living in 3D worlds, dressed in flashy clothes or penguin outfits. Then along came Apple to really rock the world. The iPod was born and the decade was defined. It's 2002 and we're really hitting our stride now, as are the robots. But in the days when 3G was still in its infancy, it is a cunning way that some of you were getting online. By finding an unsecured Wi-Fi network using a metal snack tube and then war chalking it on the pavement for everyone else to find. Cunning. Richard went undercover in Hong Kong to infiltrate the world of software and DVD piracy. And in fact, the whole spy thing looked such fun that everyone played dress up and tried to do Mission Impossible on a budget of 10 pence. And as we tried to explain what you could do with the world's most powerful supercomputer, we enlisted the help of a young rising star who was about to go universal. And the idea is to look at a model of the global climate, the Earth. Now at the moment, models of the way that the atmosphere works and the way that the oceans work are based on dividing the Earth up into grids. And then you can focus in on very small phenomena. Like your beautiful hair, Brian. 2003 rolls around and before anyone was talking about the cloud, this chap turns up wearing it. Not sure what happened to him, but the shirt lives on. Burnt into the back of people's retinas to this day. David Reed opted to get measured for a more sober costume and also showed us what he wore at the weekend. And in your spare time, this was the amazing content that we were recommending online. 
You can even get interactive and play the pan pipes using your mouse. Thank you, Sev. Thank you, partners. The budget wouldn't stretch to a horse. Meanwhile, Kate strolled into town for the first time, Rob was writing his own ringtones, and Chris and Simon demonstrated the very latest portable photo scanner. In 2004, we bought ourselves a Dan. Here he is out looking for toilet roll, and the only thing left in the tin goods aisle was Google Soup. Tell you what we weren't short of though, Nokia phones. One in three of us around the world owned a Nokia who were surely unstoppable and would be around forever. Talking of things vanishing without a trace, here's Richard in Japan sporting pretty much the opposite of a high-vis jacket. And here's something else none of us should have had to see. The proposal was another piece of technological creativity. I designed a flowery montage and beamed it to my beloved PDA when she least suspected it. Ian Hardy's wedding report, not at all toe curling. Still, at least we didn't have to see him in the bath. Oh, there he is. And here he is again, this time appearing as a Mekon on the world's largest display in Las Vegas in 2005. It's the year we saw hints of TV on mobile and TV in animals. In India, we saw rural villages start to get access to the internet, health information and education. By the way, this is the best mobile phone there has ever been. Okay. But we also saw the dangers of sending our unwanted tech to poorer countries without thinking of the consequences. In the cities, India's poor scrape a living by breaking down PCs and monitors. But what they don't realise is that the toxic chemicals inside, like cadmium and lead, can pose serious health risks. And as always, Japan was a joyous glimpse of what happens when you embrace technology without fear. An attitude I think we could all do with every now and again. Watch out, here comes 2006 with a new look, a new host and some stunningly expensive special effects. We took a rare peek inside the new technology superpower that was and is China. Before the Kindle, we were already looking at the e-paper technology that would power it. And as phones struggled desperately to become smart, we tried out some of the new designs, including a touchscreen device that's not a million miles away from Apple's forthcoming world changer. 2007, Africa, and we were testing cameras in the wild. Fortunately, we weren't eaten by anything enormous, unless you count a giant Pac-Man. I'll see you in London. It's that way, I think. Yeah. In Namibia, we trekked miles in crazy solar hats to trial satellite broadband in the desert. Either it's going to blow up or we've got a lock. This year's hot topic was piracy websites, and in particular, the protests outside the Swedish parliament that followed the Pirate Bay being shut down. Chris used the age-old coffee jar analogy to ask which disc format was going to win, HD DVD or Blu-ray? The answer? Streaming. We saw misbehaving furniture in San Francisco, and then Dan came across a small company that had something electrifying in its garage. It took Tesla another five years to start delivering its saloon car, but this one really did set the balls in motion. Talking of balls, here's the beginnings of live on-set motion capture demonstrated by some idiot in a very tight suit. And of course, there was that new phone from that company, and that was when everything changed. In 2008, the rest of the mobile phone companies tried to play catch up. Touch screens were everywhere. The mobile web was getting there, but surely the iPhone couldn't slay all of the established phone makers? And Nokia, which sells more phones in one week than Apple does in a year, will have its own touch screen rival by December. But as we started to spend more time online, our digital footprints were leaving behind significant clues about us. And we decided to show how your personal data could be scraped and used by anyone who knew how to write a Facebook app. We wrote an evil application which secretly collected the personal details of you and your friends and sent them to us. Fortunately, Facebook closed that hole and no one has ever used our personal data against us since. 
Hey there, and welcome to the week in tech. It was the week that the UK's main internet providers agreed to remove data caps on fixed line broadband during the coronavirus pandemic. A Zoom customer is suing the video call company, claiming its sharing of data to Facebook is a violation of user privacy. We got in touch with Zoom, who said the Facebook software development kit has since been removed from the app. And the owner of video chat app House Party has offered $1 million to anyone who could show evidence it was the victim of a commercial smear campaign. This follows claims that downloading the app led to other services such as Netflix and Spotify to being hacked. It was also the week that robot cars started patrolling the streets of Tunisia. In an effort to enforce the country's lockdown, remote-controlled vehicles now approach people on the street, asking why they're outside. Engineers at Stanford have developed an ankle exoskeleton that can be strapped to a user's legs to make running easier. The motors pull a cable that runs up the back of the leg, extending the ankle as the toes push off the ground. And finally, is video calling getting a little bit boring now? Well, you could always, I don't know, chat to a goat. The Sweet Farm Sanctuary in California has made their animals available online. Called Goat to Meeting, the scheme also features appearances from other barnyard animals. Well, not such a bad idea. Right, let's get back to it. 2009 was a packed year. Japan was as brilliantly Japanese as ever. We bought a botnet and augmented reality was a reality. Home internet was getting so fast that we couldn't think what we'd need it for, but then smart TVs arrived and it turned out the answer was everything. 3D TV had resurfaced like some blurry white elephant in stupid glasses. We told him it would never catch on. Mind you, that's what I said to this guy too, but Danielek didn't listen and Spotify happened anyway. It was a funny old year really. LJ became a cyborg and Dan did something really odd with technology. I actually have no idea what he's doing right now. It's a new decade and 2010 starts with a bang. Well, a crack actually, as Dan is told that this phone is completely unbreakable. So he broke it. I actually broken the phone. Do not challenge us. Play music with lightning? Check. Go skiing in the Dubai desert? Of course. Make high-tech fashion look cool? Uh... Here's Mark out scavenging with his nan and auntie Susan. Now that games developer Bungie is out of the Halo business, what happens to the stars of its games? Those spacefaring super soldiers, the Spartans? Window cleaning and lift attendants, apparently. But the year was once again dominated by Apple, this time going big on tablets. But just the next year, the man who had led the company from next to nothing to global domination left us. Steve Jobs, the biggest tech superstar of his time. Also in 2011, Lara joined the team and immediately went for a lie down. Trouble is that I often get up at 3.30 in the morning to, well, talk about the weather. Good morning. Yeah, you remember the weather, don't you? It's the thing that happens outside. In a year full of wiggly robots, holographic TV and very cheap costume hire, we went looking for the next big thing. And here it is. For truly portable smartphone viewing, check out this TV hat. Sorry, here it is. Imagine wearable, bendable and colour changeable tech. The breakthrough could be a material called graphene. Down there, taking rare time out from his now pathological need to destroy technology. More testosterone overload in 2012 as Mark demonstrated the standoff between the games consoles using the medium of the Spaghetti Western. Special guest star, Ennio Marioni. I thank you. India started rolling out a new universal ID scheme and farmers were watering their crops using text messages. Just a shame our sat-nav wasn't up to much. We also saw elephant collars and smart water pumps in Kenya. And could you make a film on a mobile phone in 2012? No, absolutely not. So we did. 
with special effects. You're welcome. By 2013, 3D printing was churning out all sorts of weird stuff, including bits for planes and space rovers. Talking of which, here's another number from Mark's dressing up box as he went full 2001 to look at the new Xbox One. And yes, that is what he wears when he goes to the shops nowadays. Wouldn't save him from the attack of the giant robot spiders though. But right now, when our biggest enemy is a tiny virus, I remember this trip to the deep frozen blood banks of Iceland, where decode genetics were at the forefront of research into why each of us does or doesn't suffer from certain diseases. Back in 2014 though, nothing could be further from our minds as we popped on our phone skirts, hopped on our one wheels and headed to Australia to see plans to bring down space debris using lasers. They were also studying how bushfires behave to help the authorities predict who to evacuate and when. In Japan, Dan got his hands on the world's first 5G transmitter. This now fits in your phone. I did some air graffiti, Lara did the windows, and LJ got a facelift. See, I told you she was a cyborg. Talking of which... Can you imagine my eyes looking at the bottom of the bed? <laughs> in 2014, drones were everywhere. They were literally falling out of the sky. Hey! In Israel, Jen scared the life out of a lamp, and we saw the first self-driving car that could handle junctions. Unlike Mark. Watch out, Mark, there's a visual effect straight ahead. Twenty fifteen was a vintage year. South Korea served up robots that hunt and mince jellyfish, an esports tournament where the teams were kept in a fish tank and flying hair dryers. And who can forget Hubo, the robot that made me lose my faculties in the middle of a car park. <laughs> MIT in Boston was full of excellent ideas, and in Spain we filmed a whole programme on mobiles. Don't do it, it was awful. What do you mean everyone's having to do it these days? Japan? Brilliant, full of fake cats and ping pong playing robots. I was even checked out by a dinosaur. Was that entirely necessary? Yeah, I think, I think it was actually. I think it had something. Artificial intelligence was becoming huge and Steve created one that learned to walk. HoloLens was on the scene and VR was going mainstream. Kate was making it out of cardboard and Mark was falling for it in a big way. <laughs> Right, I actually tried to lean on the table there. We thought nothing could top 2015, but then along came 2016. We saw the Large Hadron Collider, and I had a moment. We went live for the first time, and the whole audience had one. And we became the first show to be filmed entirely in 360. Look out, we're behind you. We made brand new friends. It's Hacker T Dog from CBBC. Wow, it's Lara Lewington from BBC Click. <laughs> Never heard of that. We saw such inspiring stories. But me, one of my lifetime highlights was the Cybathlon in Switzerland, where roboticists and disabled athletes work together to one day make disability a thing of the past. By 2017, we were starting to get the sense that something was going on. Fake news was the talk of the town, and Cambridge Analytica were being accused of messing with our brains. Don't mess with Dave's brain or he'll mess with yours. And seriously, don't mess with cats or she'll do some serious damage. Talking of damage, this is the year the robots stormed the castle. That's the first guest we've lost, as I recall. Space was hotting up with all kinds of plans to explore the solar system and land on other worlds. It's bouncy. And then there was Fukushima. I climbed under a nuclear reactor and saw the robots that they're hoping will clean up the melted radioactive fuel. Nothing I can add to that sentence will make it sound any more impressive. But perhaps more than anything, this scene now sticks in my mind. The site of an abandoned nearby town. A scene that now seems uncomfortably close to home. We're on a 
actually standing on is less than a millimetre thick and it really feels that it's Protecting the environment has become a more and more urgent task and we've seen our fair share of green tech over the years. Here's Lara on a floating solar farm in Norway. In some ways 2018 was pretty wet all round. Steve did a VR water slide because, well, why not? And here's Nick on a jet-powered waterboard because, well, jet-powered waterboard. If we'd have let him, he would have gone on this too. See you later, I'm off on the hoverboard. Not everything was as it seemed, mind you. Mark entered the largest green screen studio in the world and swears that he pulled this off first time. <laughs> and the crowd goes wild. Seriously, don't believe your eyes. The rise of deep fakes meant that face swapping was a reality. Although whoever thought this was the best way to demonstrate it needs their head examined. We did so much in 2018, a lot of it in slow-mo, which makes everything look cool. But once again, you've got to hand it to the Japanese. This put everything else in the shade. Maisie, are they working? Yeah, I can see your microphone and I can see that you're smiling and I can see there's a lady in the front with a red jacket. The guy next to her is wearing stripes. Oh my God, it's so amazing. Remember Maisie? we do. She broke our hearts and mended them all in one go as she got to read her favourite book for the first time since she lost her sight. 2019 was an emotional year really. We hit a continuous run of a thousand shows, celebrating by making an interactive adventure that was the hardest programme we've ever made. 50 years after the arguably greater achievement of landing on the moon, LJ bounced her voice off it. Hello moon people. And we got to see the vehicles that we'll be travelling into space in next. You feel the forces in your tailbone? Oh, I can of... feel the forces in my tailbone. As could Omar. Plenty of forces heading tailbone with there too, I'd have thought. Yeah, I'd say there's nothing that we won't do for Click, a programme that's allowed us to live out our wildest, most childish dreams, and which has driven us mad and kept us sane every week for longer than anyone would have imagined. For however long you've been on this journey with us, I hope you've enjoyed the ride. Such great memories. It's been a huge privilege for us to see these incredible things and share them with you over the past two decades. The world's changed a lot in the last 20 years, but right now it's changing in a way that I don't think many of us have seen in our lifetimes. And that means that Click has to change too. Like many of you, the team are now separated and isolated. And that means it's going to be nearly impossible for us to make a weekly programme. So we've taken the difficult decision to flip him well, carry on. In the last 20 years, we have pioneered ways of making programmes in bizarre and impossible circumstances so if anyone can do it we can you've given us 20 years it's the least we can do for you i don't know what next week's click is going to look like yet but i promise you this there will be a click next week so thank you from all of us thank you for watching thank you for being there and we will see you soon.